Welcome. This is a lecture series. Please have a paper and pencil ready to take notes. The more detailed your notes, the more help it will provide to you during your assignments later. And it will help you for studying for your assessments as well. Let's get started. We're going to be discussing Standard 8.3.R.6 for the State of Oklahoma. That's 8th grade, the third standard for reading, point six. The language of this standard reads, students will analyze the structures of text, for example, compare and contrast, problem solution, cause effect, claims of evidence, and content by making complex inferences about text to draw logical conclusions from textual evidence. Whew, that's big. Let's break it down. Let's first talk about text structure. So whenever an author is writing information, they do it in a variety of ways so we can remember or understand the text better. For example, they might write it in chronological order, or they might use some of those uh, structures of the text that we talked about before. The structure can change multiple times in a work and even within a paragraph. So I have some examples and definitions here for you. Let's talk about cause and effect. So one event causes another to happen. Let's look at the example. Buffalo used to roam in large herds in Oklahoma. Professional hunters began to hunt them in the 1890s and it led to their near extinction. So the event caused another to happen. Even though there used to be a lot of buffalo, the hunters began to hunt them and then it led to their near extinction. So this was a cause and effect. Then we have comparison and contrasting. It's how ideas or things are alike or different. For example, humans and dolphins are alike in that they each speak different dialects and they give each other names. They are different in that man makes his home on land and dolphins live in the ocean. So the author may be using comparison and contrast to help us to relate to something a little better. Are you really like a dolphin? Well, there's something here it tells us that we are alike, but even though we are alike, we are very different. So it also helps you to have that structure of the context of comparison and contrast. So let's think about description. As I mentioned in earlier uh, videos, description is one of my favorite things. It's painting a picture with words. Here's an example. The black, soft, rotten banana sat in the dusty windowsill with a dozen fruit flies buzzing in the hot summer air. Think about that for a second. Do you have that picture in your head? Did these words make you think of those things? Did your nose twitch thinking about the dusty windsill? Did you kind of shudder a little bit about the flies buzzing in that hot summer air? That is description, painting a picture with words. Let's look at problem and solution. There are two parts in the text. First they present the problem and then they present a solution. For example, many accidents are caused by texting and driving. That's the problem. Now they're going to give you a solution. If all drivers would sign a pact and stick to it to not text and drive, we could save lives. So this is the problem that they presented, then they gave you the solution. Please pause the video and write down the white words for the definitions of each one of these things. You don't have to write down the examples, but please write them down if they will help you to understand or remember what these structures of text are at a later date. Let's talk a little bit about how the content of an author would be organized. They might organize their content in order of importance or spatial order or sequence or chronological order. So how does the author organize their information? Let's start with order of importance. The author can organize their information from what's least important to most important or they can organize it from most important to least important facts. In the example here, I said, when I get home from school, I have to walk the dog first, 
then I can have a snack, and then I can play video games. So this is the order of importance that perhaps my mom wants me to have. I have to walk the dog first, then I can get a snack, and then I can play video games. So let's talk about spatial order. Items are presented according to their location. When you walk into the garage, the example starts, my car is on your left and the tool chest is on the right. The top drawer of the tool chest has the hammers. So this is a spatial order or where they are located in the space, in their location. Then we also have se sequence and chronological order. So the author will state events in the order in which they happened. You've probably heard this nursery rhyme. Jack and Jill ran up the hill to fetch a pail of water. That's the first thing they did. Then Jack fell down and broke his crown. Those are the next two things that happened. And Jill came tumbling after. Speaking of crown, do you know what that means? That means he hurt his head. So the sequence in the chronological order is when the events are stated in the order in which they happened. Please pause the video and write down the definitions of these three ways that an author may organize their work. Let's take a quick peek back at our standard. So we looked at the structures of the text and the content. So we looked at how the author would have organized their text and we looked at some of the things they might have done or the structures they used to write. So we now we know how they wrote it, so now we want to make complex inferences about those texts to draw a logical conclusion from that textual evidence. So let's look a little bit about complex inferences. What is an inference? Inference is what we are going to figure out based on experience and it's not directly stated. You can pause the video and write down the definition of inferences. But let me put it in more simple words. An inference is what you infer or you figure out happened from the text that you're reading. What are they trying to tell you? What do they want you to know? Why did they use those structures that they used? Pause the video now and write down the definition. In simple terms, we're going to come to a conclusion. We have looked and figured out which text structure the author has used. We've decided why they used it, what they wanted from us. We inferred that. Now we're going to make a conclusion. We're going to make inference using our reasoning and evidence to make conclusions about specifics or generalities that were not included in the text. This is part of us having critical reading skills. Having a critical reading skill takes time. We have to really dig deep into the text. And in order for us to really develop those critical reading skills, we have to read, 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 read. We have to read different things and look at them and with a critical eye. So for this standard, for A.3.R.6, students will analyze the structures of the text, and we talked about comparing and contrasting, problem and solution, cause and effect, and claims and evidence. So they're going to analyze the structures of the text and the content by making complex inferences about text to draw logical conclusions from textual evidence. You're going to look at how the author wrote it, why they used those structures, we're going to figure out what they wanted us to learn, and we're going to draw a logical conclusion from what we have read. Now it's your opportunity to practice these skills from assignments from your teacher or from your parent. And then you need to take an assessment to ensure mastery of the skill. Thank you for joining me today.